Is it morning or evening? Did you just get up from your nap? It might be morning. Turn in your hymnal to 646. 646. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. Forth to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye that are men now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Verse 4. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. To him who overcometh a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Turn over to 650. 650. Oh, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory and while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds way over spread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sigh oh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. So let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, 
we'll sing and we'll shout the victory. Amen. You look good tonight. You're welcome. Aren't you glad that we can know within our hearts that we're serving the Lord and we have the promise of heaven, the promise of eternal life? And uh, that should cause us to rejoice. That should cause us to praise the Lord, shouldn't it? So, I'm so glad that Pastor Mike is uh, going to be sharing in God's Word tonight. We want to continue to pray for uh, Lucy and Jake Buckner and um, those who are having so many difficulties. Um, Jamie Neal, um, you might know them. Jamie sits over here. It's Eric's brother and uh, his wife uh, has uh, MS, I think, and um, is, uses the cane to walk. Uh, but he has been diagnosed with COVID. They both have compromised immune systems. So pray for them that uh, the Lord's touch would just be upon them in these days as well. But let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Lord, we do thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that we can stand up for you. And Lord, we're so grateful that you stand beside us and walk with us. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of eternal life in heaven. Lord, I pray especially that you would be with Jamie tonight as he battles this virus. I pray, Lord, that your touch would be upon him. We pray, Lord, your continued renewal of Lucy and of Jake Buckner. Thank you, Lord, for your touch on them. And again, Lord, we pray for this little one, Luke, that your will would be done in his life. Be with the family. Be their strength. Be their help. Father, I pray that your anointing would be upon Pastor Mike tonight as he shares from his heart that we might grow and hear the word and respond to it. Thank you for who you are. These things we pray. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Come, Pastor Mike. We'll give you plenty of time. You've got to fill the whole time, all right? Teach <laughs> me how to use all this all this technology and I told Alan that pastor's been failing for about two years now and I just don't don't think I'm going to get there I'm, I'm going to preach on, on the heart tonight and <clears throat> some years ago I preached on the fact that the heart the seat of volition and did a sermon on the heart at, I believe it was at Charles Church here in Charleston. And we're getting in, and I'll never forget, because my wife is my strongest critic. And she said, Mike, that was a good message. I enjoyed that. I wished I'd had it in my notes. So I'd be good again tonight. So I didn't. So we're struggling. But I want to start with you. And I shared this with some of you before. If you remember when, when I had that those problems, and my, my heart got a little bit messed up, the electricity in my heart. And they end up putting a, a pacemaker in, and you're, you're aware of that. And Cindy was telling my kids about how the doctors told her that, that my, I had a, a large heart. And that's what was keeping me from having the symptoms that normally most people would have in that situation. And, and she, she was either telling them, or my, my son and his daughter told in front of my 10-year-old grandson, who we call Turtle. Now, someday we'll go into that. And he looked at him, and, and I love him. I love him so much. He said, well, everybody knows Pawpaw has got a large heart. 
I love it. I had to share that with you on Father's Day and just, just so neat. But I do want to talk about our hearts and, and, and not our physical hearts so much. You might, I might have some ties into it. I'm not sure yet and all. But, but we need to make sure, and you hear the word so often by preachers, our hearts need to be right with God. And I'm going to go a little bit there and all. But in Matthew, and I'll even come back to reading this, Jesus had described the, the folks at that time, the, the spiritual condition at that time, the generation at that time, as evil and adulterous. And that's in Matthew 12, 38, 40, 45, right in that general area. And, and I got to thinking as, as I was reading, and, and I'm, I'm pretty strong on the fact that America's in trouble. And the churches of America are in trouble, and we need to get back to God, and we need to fill our hearts with things of God. And, and we've, we've replaced all those things. So here he described them as evil and adulterous. He described and talked about how they would be condemned by the Ninevites and the Queen of Sheba in the day of judgment. And, and this is Jesus talking, and if we believe that, 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 that the generations today are evil, how can we think but what? There will be destruction for us if we don't come back and get back to where we need to be and put Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit, the things of God, in our heart. Say amen. amen. Now, I won't go there. In our present text, we're going to talk about the evil generation and and, and I, I I like the news from the work that I've done in the past and all I like two things on TV the weather channel and the news. I, I, I like those. I don't know why. I just I just do. And and I'm kind of mesmerized and I think some of you are too from some of the conversations about how that the world is so messed up and you turn on the news and you just don't see much good on the news at all, do you? You just don't see much good about what's going on in the world. And and it used to be when, when when you talk to people that went to church, the people were the first thing to tell you about, about church and what happened at church or somebody did this at church or somebody did that. I was so thrilled. I got in my car today and I called Cindy because I was going to meet her here at this church and I, I was at Walton, West Virginia. And, and I asked her how church went and, and she was kind of bubbling and said, Randy did a good message. We always does a good message. And said, he, he sang a song and said, there's a high note and he hit it really good and said, I told him about that and all. And she was just talking about how good church was this morning. We need to talk about it. And we need to fill our hearts with how good church is and how good church people are and how good the Holy Spirit is. But instead, it seems to me like that we have pushed the things of God down to where we talk about it just about last. Most of the time when we get in the car, usually Bill and Linda may be with us or we may be with them. And, and most of the time we talk about what we're going to eat. First thing we get in the car, we get on the cell phone. What do you want to eat? Well, what are you going to order? What are you going to have? I have to wonder if we're filled with the Spirit, if we shouldn't be talking about what happened at church and about the things of God and fill our hearts with God's food rather than man's food. Somebody say amen. Amen. I got real, it gets tough. You can tell I like to eat. Okay, thank you. And, and here, and if you read this scripture, I may come back and read a little bit. By an example of demon position, Jesus warned that it's not just enough to have the process of one's sins forgiven. We have to, we have to continue on with Christ. We have to fill our hearts and our minds and our being with things of God. Even the scripture talks about that when we're first converted, we're to, we'll be taking the milk of the word and we're to grow into the meat of the word. Amen? And that means that we fill our hearts and our minds and who we are with things of God. Unless there's a reformation in America, and, and I believe it starts in the churches. You've heard me preach this so many times. The churches need to get right with God. And by that, I'm not saying we're out here doing a bunch of, this church, a bunch of silly stuff or anything. But if you look at the church in general in America, we don't even know what the church stands for anymore. Listen to some of these guys and gals on TV. Some of them are just absolutely awful and a lie and wrong what they're preaching, but yet they pull a lot of people. Now, church, I'm here to tell you that's wrong. Be careful what you, what you listen to. 
unless there's a reformation and something positive is put in its place. The end, if we, if we don't put God and keep God in our heart, the end state of the person will be worse. And I'll come back to this than it was in the beginning. And this has been the, the case of the Jews in Jesus' day. They, they got excited and they, they repented and they wanted to walk with Jesus, but they weren't staying, stayed filled with Jesus. They weren't keeping Jesus in their heart. And even the false teachers had come back in. And an important lesson here that I want to talk about, about tonight, if I might, it's a lesson of neutrality or disinterest. We need to be on fire for Jesus, not just here on the church. People, I've heard people say, and thank God not here, they'll come and say, well, I didn't get much out of church today. And I ask a question, whose fault's that? First thing people tell me, the preacher. No, it's not. It's our fault if we come to church and don't get anything out of it. Somebody please say amen. But you see, our minds are all, all off in other ways and, and our hearts are filled with other things and this neutrality or this disinterest. We must replace evil with good. Now, by that, before I accepted Jesus, before you accepted Jesus, and the Bible talks about it and preachers preach about it, we have this carnal nature. Nod your heads. I can't see you, so I don't care which way you nod. Just move so I can see you moving and everything. Excuse me. There's a danger of having this empty heart. And, and I like to say our heart is like a home. And in our home, there's all kinds of things that can hurt you. I can't tell you how many times my wife has been doing something with the dishes, washing them, drying them. I don't know what she does over at that sink. But she gets cut at least once a month with a sharp knife. Now, you would think, I don't go there. I love you, Cindy. But, but there's things in your home that's going to hurt you. I know people that's had, had a toe cut off with a lawnmower. You know what I'm talking about? There's things that's going to hurt you. Excuse me. In, in, in our home. And in our home can re, reside things that produce much harm. In our hearts can reside things that cause much harm to people. And I want to focus a bit, a bit here today. Matthew 15, 19 says, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemies. From the heart, from our mind, from our inner being, these things come forth. I preach, I preach often, and, and all the other preachers I do too, the devil or man can't make me do anything. What I choose to do evil, what I choose to do for Satan, what I choose to do wrong. And yes, by the way, when you do something wrong, when you lie, when you cheat, when you have adultery, when those things happen, you're doing it for Satan. Come on, that's an amen place. Aren't you? When I lie, I'm working for Satan. When I steal, I'm working for Satan. Amen? And that's because it's filled in, inside of us. But our house can be cleansed. Thank God our house can be cleansed. Our heart can be cleansed. Aren't you glad that you have a clean heart tonight? Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed. You see, as we grow with God, as we serve God, as we become sanctified, we have a pure heart and a pure mind, a mind that's, that's seated on moving and working and living for God. And when something's full, it pushes out the bad or pushes out what you don't want. You ever, you ever see that? We, we were, I don't want to get off track of a little bit hurt on time. Acts 15, 8, 9, God who knows my heart and your heart showed them he exists to them by giving the Holy Spirit to them. And the Holy Spirit guides us and helps us just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them for he purified their hearts by faith. Now faith is something we don't spend much time talking about today. You don't hear a lot of people talking about faith and, and I think that, that a lot of the liberals have taken faith away from us. Because, you know, I, I believe that, that God created, amen, Genesis 1, 1, up through that tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. He breathed his life, his, the breath of life into man, amen? 
and, and he did that. But they're teaching, they're teaching that, that we, we generated all this way or evolved from all this way. That's not what the word says. And, and by faith, we come believing. I believe because God told me in his holy word from 2 Timothy 3.16 says, it's God breathed, God inspired the immutable holy word of God. I believe God's word and I have enough faith to know that it's God's word, that God gave it to you and I through those holy inspired writers. And for too many times, we ignore that. The other day, I'll try to make sense out of this. I, I lost a, a crown while we were camping. It just decided it didn't like me anymore. It just popped out while I was eating. I was able to save it. And, and I put it in a little tiny baggie after I called the dentist and asked him how I could put it back in. And I, I put it in my pants pocket, my shorts pocket. So we were doing some things and we're on our way home. And we get home that night. And I went to hunt my crown, nowhere to be found. What in the world? So the first prayer I made, God, God, I, I really need this. I don't have six or seven hundred dollars to, to, to buy another one. It's, it's going to hurt. And besides that, Cindy's going to fuss at me. So, so we're going through the house and everything. And, all, and later that evening, I guess I'm kind of despondent. And everywhere I go, I'm, I'm raising up books and I'm, I'm pushing stuff to the side and I'm looking, looking everywhere. We even called McDonald's where we ate that day to say, did anybody find, did anybody find this crown? But, but she said, Mike, how come, you're, how come you're so despondent? What's wrong with you today? I said, my first comment is to, nothing's wrong with me. Well, Cindy, yeah, there is. I can't find my crown. I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna get it right now. But I, I didn't and she did, she did really good. But when I went to bed, and I'm not going to tell you all that story, but when I went to bed, I said, God, just let that thing pop on my nightstand. Let me see it on my nightstand. Now, that's the dumbest prayer I've ever prayed. God's not going to take that crown wherever it was and just lay it on my nightstand just to keep my wife from fussing me. But I said, then after I realized I was praying kind of ignorant, I come back and I said, God, I said, if you would just reveal in my mind where I put it. So I had also been to the hardware store in Clendenin. So the hardware store opened at 8 o'clock the next morning. I get up and I put on my clothes. I'd taken my shower and brushed my teeth and did all those things. And I get ready and I'm going out the door to go to the hardware store. And I put on the shorts that I had on the day before. Now, I want you to know, I had searched all these pockets. I'd patted myself down. I looked everywhere. And that crown, I couldn't find it. But those, those shorts had two pockets in the right side, one little zipper pocket. And I felt something when I put them on, and I said, could it be? Could it be? Could it be? Hallelujah, it was. Woo! And, and the reason I'm telling you that, you see, God's got it under control. That crown wasn't the most important thing in the world to God, but he allowed me to find it. I just, I just need to keep having faith. And Bill and I talked a little bit about faith when we started here. Hebrews says our conscience is pure from dead works to serve God. And how much more then will the blood of Christ, how much more who through the, his eternal spirit and who offered himself an unblemished sacrifice to God, how much more will he cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? I want to serve God, don't you? I want, I, want to, I want to, the people that I have opportunity to preach to or to teach to, I want to teach them that it's so important to have our hearts filled with things of God. It's so easy to get stuff of the world in our hearts, stuff of the world in our mind. It's so easy to concentrate and focus on all the other stuff. But that's not what the Bible teaches us. We're to fill our hearts with God and things of God. We're expected to fill our home. I didn't get mad at that knife that cut her finger that day. Matter of fact, about five different days. I didn't throw it out. I didn't go out and buy another one. We kept it. But we cleansed it, and we, we put a big red label. No, we didn't and everything. But we fill our homes, and our homes have things in them 
that's going to, going to hurt us. Through faith, Christ himself is to dwell in our hearts, according to Ephesians 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, God's peace and his grace are to fill our hearts. The faith of, for God is to fill our hearts. The love of God is to fill our hearts. The songs that folks, folks sing, a, a lady sang this morning, I wasn't here, and Cindy told me what a great job she did, and she told me, and this is on the, I don't remember if it's on the phone, she told me, she told me that, that the mic went out and she just kept on going like, like nothing had happened. Hallelujah. You see, when your heart's filled with God, the things and what people think doesn't matter nearly as much as what God thinks and how we love God. But you can't do that if you're not inner filled, if your whole inner being is not, forgive the word, possessed by God. I want to be possessed by God, don't you? Build up. Nobody else? I want to be possessed by God, don't you? I'm not going to let you sit there and not say anything. So Christ himself, according to Ephesians, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, and I pray that you be rooted and established in love. I share with people. The hardest thing for me when we were converted, some people had done me wrong, some people I just didn't like, and I wanted to hurt them. Nobody else ever wanted to hurt anybody, did you? I heard three amens. No, I'm kidding. And, 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 and I just, I, I struggle with that because if you've done me wrong, you've done my, my family wrong and everything. And I had that, 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 that hate, that hurt, that non-forgiveness was rooted in my heart. It was deep in there and it was embedded deep in there. It had roots like that, like that, that, that tooth in your head. It's got roots and jagged and everything. But as we let the Holy Spirit fill our hearts, there's not room for the stuff of the world to reside in there. It gets pushed off to the side and we make more room for the things of God. Colossians talks about the grace and the peace that's to fill our hearts. That's the peace of Christ, the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Not the things of Satan, not the things of the world, but the peace of God. As members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom through psalms and, and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. I can't sing a lick. Now, I've had people, Kevin Miller, which is brother's funeral history, say, well, we can teach you. No, you can't. I'm bad. I'm 76 years old. There's not enough time for me to learn. It's just not going to get there. And I've, I've come to peace with that. So what I do, if you could have heard me right here, and I felt sorry for Pastor Randy because I'm sitting here on this front pew and we're singing those songs that I knew and have heard so many years and I'm singing out loud. I'm saying, how in the world is he staying on tune with me back there doing all this kind of stuff? But you know what? I'm going to sing praises to God because my heart, you need to sing praises to God because our hearts and our mind are filled with the love and the joy of God. If we don't get that in our mind, I'm always going to sit back there and, and not sing, not enjoy, just let that part of my, my relationship with God go away. And when I sing, I'm happier and I praise God more. And so are you. You with me? This is so important, I believe. We, we've gotten in our lives. We're busy. I'm, I'm busy. I retire, and I think, man, I need to go back to work so I'll have some time. I'm not going to. We're, we're busy, and we let things of the job, we let things of life, we let things of kids, we let things of our dogs, we let things of everything fill our, fill our heart when it ought to be the things of God, and the, 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 those other things just need to take their place. And the heart the, the Space in your heart will move back and forth. When it comes time that you really need to spend time in prayer for your kids or loving your kids, God will give you that time as long as you're giving him the priority. God will give you the ability to pray for our kids and, and, and our neighbors and all as long as we're giving him the glory. Amen? Even God's law is to be written in our heart. Hebrews 8.10 through this covenant, I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind, and listen to what he says, and write them in their hearts. The laws of God will be written in their heart. I will be their God, and you know the rest of it, and they will be my people. God's my God. That means I'm his people. God is your God. 
that means that you're his people, right? Isn't that the way it works? Nod your heads. I got my glasses off. I can see that far and everything. And, and when I say God's law was to be written in our heart, the, 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 the laws and, and the things of God are not just something to be passing over. It's not just something I read 10 years ago and never think about it anymore. It's not something that, that, that's written out there and I think, well, that's meant for Bill Burdett. It's meant for everybody. No, it's meant for everybody. Too many people think, well, that applies to them. That don't apply to me. It does. And we're to fill our hearts with God's law. In other words, we're to know what God's word says. We're to know what the Holy Spirit says. And the Holy Spirit, you know, he don't talk just to me. And he just don't tell me something because he don't have anything else to do. I have a need to know it. Maybe to share it with somebody. Maybe I'm just lacking in my heart. So when God tells us something, we need to put it in our hearts and use it. Right? Had opportunity. I fished a little bit last week. I haven't fished in about 25 years. I never was very good at it. I'm still not very good at it. But hallelujah, God bless me. We were, we were up on Schaefer's Fork. I still have a Zebco 303. That's a closed-faced close face rod because I don't know how to use those open face rods. They get tangled. They do, who laughed? Was that you, Wanda? They do all kinds of weird things, and they get all these birds' nests in the, in the line and everything. And I, like, I like those closed face. I don't, I don't have all those kind of problems. Our friend with us, he'd fished up there about, about 10 days and hadn't even had a bite. Cindy caught a few fish. Without exaggeration, I threw my line in, and within one minute, I caught a nice about 10, 12-inch bass. I think this is good. Now, my eyes are so bad that I couldn't take the hook off, and I had to have my wife take the hook off for me. Talking about, about umbling you, that tumbles you, because I can't, I can't see the hook. I just, I just can't see it. So we get everything fixed up, and you should have seen, I had three people trying to get that thing off there. So I throw the line back out, within a minute, I catch another nice fish. I think, well, this, this fishing is pretty much fun. I should have been doing this. So we get it off, and I throw it back out, and I get the third fish. I didn't get any more fish that day. I didn't get any more fish that day. But, but I was so happy. And when we fill our hearts with things of God, you think me catching those three fish made me happy? God makes us far happier than catching a silly old fish. He does. But I put all my emphasis on all those other things when our emphasis ought to be in God. Y'all get it because you wouldn't be here on a Sunday night to hear me preach if you didn't get it, Right? Right? You get it. You understand what I'm talking about. But sometimes we need to re be reminded of the importance to feel who we are, to fill our very inner being with the things of God and not so much the things of the world. I got some mad at the Weather Channel. Anybody get mad at the Weather Channel? Just me? Y'all gonna know how weird I am before this is over. But they had this local one, the eights. And local one, the eights tells you what it's going to be in Clinton and West Virginia. Charleston, I think, is what it shows. And then I watch it every morning, every noon, every evening, and every 11 o'clock at night because it might change in that two or three hours. So we got home, and all they had this regional forecast. I said, how could they do that to me? It reminded me of my message. If I listened and applied to my mind the first time what they said, I wouldn't have to listen again that day. If we listen to what God tells us, it gets in our heart a whole lot earlier and I don't have to be beat up on nearly so much. God has to beat up on me a bit. How about you? Sometimes I don't pay attention. Sometimes I hear it and I put it someplace else. Sometimes I think, like I said, it's for somebody else. What happens when we don't fill our hearts? There's an old maxim that nature abhors a vacuum. And, and it's used to express the idea that unfilled or empty spaces are unnatural. They go against the, the rules and, and the laws and of, of nature. If we don't make an effort to fill our heart with good things, then, we're, then evil will return most likely and return with a vengeance. And say, Mike, what do you mean by that? If we let evil keep coming pretty soon, maybe years, pretty soon people have a tendency to backslide because they're not staying up with God. You with me? 
And that's where the danger is. If we're not filling our heart with things of God, it makes more and more and more room for evil to come in and seed itself or set itself right there in our heart and reside there. And that's what we begin to focus on. We get that balance all messed up and we're spending more time thinking about evil, doing evil, than we are things about God. I've had to say real often, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. I messed up. Forgive me. It's okay to do that. Come on, it's okay to do that. And I guarantee not a one of you in here haven't messed up at least once in the last 10 years. That was a joke. Some examples in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. They've been washed, sanctified, and justified. And then here you're talking about sanctified being set apart, but we're to be sanctified. And, and I like that when I'm, when I'm talking about sanctification, trying to explain to people, I, I think it's to be consumed with God, to let God have total feel and sway in your heart and doing everything you can as a separate, a separate washing. And then it come back and Chris says, yet later they were engaged in sinful conduct once again. And can, then the false teachers mentioned by Peter, they said they had been brought by the Lord and escaped the pollution of the world through Jesus Christ. Second Peter, they had become entangled again. For them, the later is Second Peter 22, 1, 21, 22. For them, the latter is worse for them than the end. Meaning that when we, when we let our hearts get sheared to the point that we no longer listen to God, sometime the Holy Spirit will quit dealing and working with us and it's everlastingly, eternally, forever too late. I don't want to do anything to give up my salvation. God's not going to take it away from me just because he don't like it. But if I deliberately go out here and sin against God, people used to call it backsliding. That's still a good word. I don't want to backslide to you. If we keep our hearts filled, if we keep our minds filled, if we just take care of who we are, we're not going to backslide because God's presence <coughs> Excuse me. God's presence, the things of God, His law will fill that cavity in our hearts to full that there's not room for the evil and we're not, we don't have such a propensity to go out and do evil. Aren't you glad for that? Aren't you glad for that? Note, I said, God won't take it, but if I deliberately sin and separate myself from God and keep on and deliberately turn from God, I deliberately give it back to God. Everybody got that? A lot of people don't like that. These false teachers, according to Second Peter, they had forsaken the right way. They had their eyes full of adultery. Their hearts filled with covenants. They even denied the Lord. Oh, this is in Second Peter too. They had denied the Lord who bought them. In our case, Hebrews three twelve, our hearts can become hardened. We get so much so full, and and. A, a constant concern I have for me, and if I got it, I think maybe other people do too. Man, I was on fire when I accepted Jesus. Can you remember when you accepted Jesus? Can you remember when you accepted him? Nobody's nodding their head. None of you Christians will go ahead and have an altar call. Can you, can you remember when you accepted him? And can you remember how excited you were and how filled you were? Great, isn't it? And that went, went on that strong and that hard for, for a season. Thought I, we went home, and I thought I could win everybody that day to Christ. I went to bed, and nobody had been warm, but I sure was a happy person. As we walk with God, we, we kind of mellow a bit. And then after a while, no longer we're just mellowing. We quit telling people. We've lost some of the excitement about loving Jesus. Church, I'm as excited today as I was a day except, but for whatever reason, I don't tell people as much as I used to. And many of you don't either. It's time we stood up and tell people what Jesus Christ did for us. I was bound for eternity in hell, would be in hell when I die if it weren't for the blood of Jesus. And that blood just out there, if I don't take it, not doing me any good. I have to say, Lord, I believe. I have faith to believe. I begin to fill my heart with things of God. The next thing you know, the Holy Spirit's worked on. The next thing you know, we accept. And we're to keep filling our heart with good things of God. And we need to be joyous because we love Jesus. You ever go in church? I was in Little Rock, Arkansas. I was in Little Rock, Arkansas many years ago. And, and I 
think you're supposed to go to church if you're a believer. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you. Okay. I was just going to go to sleep or something. And, and, and so I decided I was going to go to church. And there's a little church off the military post there. And I go. And it's the coldest place I'd ever been in my life. There wasn't an amen. Nobody grinned. It was dead. Dead, dead, dead. You with me? I didn't want to go back. And I'm thinking, they ain't got something they need. I told Cindy about it. I mean, and I'm not trying to be mean at them. I, I pray they're doing good today. But we need to at least let the joy. And I want to tell you what, if we are filled with God's joy when we come in this place, whether we're saying amen, whether we're doing this or not, people will feel the joy and the love of Jesus just by our smile and the working of the Holy Spirit between us. You with me? We've got to utilize every opportunity to study God's word and and transformation begins with the renewing of mind according to Romans 12, 12. And some ways we do it. Study God's word. Study God's word. Attend all the services in church. I feel guilty preaching this to you because you're here on a, on a Sunday night. When we were converted, I thought you went to church because they were having church. We, we, when you become a mender, member of an organization, I've been members of many organizations in the military and here and there, you went to meetings. You were a participant. Why in the world, if, if we're a member of a church, we're participants, why don't we come to church? Now, y'all get it. Y'all are here. I'm, you know, I'm preaching all those other... i got to use a nice word. got to put that good in my heart. But why wouldn't you want to come? We're members. We attend here. We worship here. The COVID... I don't want to say it's going. That's not fair. COVID is not keeping us from coming together. But yet, some people don't come. I hope you're watching and get it. Some people just don't come. And it's wrong. Come on, church. It's wrong. And it's time we just acknowledge that it's wrong. Uh, we had people and people that we know and everything during COVID, they, they said they couldn't come to church. And I get that. But yet, they go and go to Walmart and buy vacation stuff when they couldn't even go on vacation. Now, come on, church. We can say it however how we want to. That's not right. Am I in trouble? Bill, am I in trouble yet? You think I'm okay? All right. Our hearts cannot become, become hardened. First Peter 3.15 says we're to sanctify God in our hearts. That's part of this. We're to participate in Bible study programs. We're to read our Bible daily, that's Psalms 1, 1 through 16. We're to fill our hearts, and I believe it was Psalms, with hymns and spiritual songs. The other day I had an opportunity to drive down from Parsons down here, down here by myself. And man, oh man, I put on 65 Cirrus, and I, I could sing with Bill Gaither, and nobody could tell I couldn't sing, and I had a good old time. And you see what happened? I filled my heart with more of the things of God. You, you with me? Am I making sense to you? I hope. This is how we let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, according to Colossians 3.16. Ephesians 5.18-19 through 19 says we're to allow ourselves to be filled with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's not going to work with us if we don't allow him to. We need to be a willing vessel. Oh, I may miss it a while ago. We can sing at church. I may have to sing by myself, but we can sing at church. We can sing at home. We can sing in the car. We can sing alone. Or we can sing with others. And to sing, I want to, I'm going to have a beer. There's a beer. There's a tear in my beard, dear, because I'm crying over you. Now, that's not the kind of songs I'm talking about. I'm talking about Beulah Land. I'm talking about, oh, what a Savior. I'm talking about the King is coming. Victory in Jesus. Amazing grace. If we can just get those in our heart and get the words in our hearts and minds, then we better can be able to sing them, and it means so much more to us. Excuse me. Let your mind dwell on things worthy of praise 
and virtue, Philippians 4.18. If our mind dwells on things of the world, we're not going to be very praising. If all we do is focus on the stuff that goes on, all the murders, all the killings, and they're important, and we need to know what goes on in the world, not what I'm saying. But we can't dwell on it. If you and I as Christians dwell on and don't put Jesus Christ first, we're off mark. Choose your friends. Cur- I'm sorry, I went too fast. Be selective about what we watch on TV and on the movies. I thought about it. I thought somebody would get mad at me. Anybody, anybody know what this is? It's kind of a remote. Nod your heads. You don't have to say amen. Kind of remote. And we've got a bunch of remotes. We've had a few TVs and, and devices at home and stuff. And we've got like seven remotes. I have no idea what they go to. And I wanted to bring one and just stomp on it. And tell you, it's not the TV that hurts us. It's the remote. For you see, nothing comes across my TV but what I hit the little button says on. Now, sometimes I'm so dumb with this modern stuff, I miss the button and I've got to do it twice. But all I've got to do, I hit the button on, and then I get to go channel 25. That's the weather channel. See, I even know the channel. She fusses because I don't use a guide. But if I want to go here, well, that, huh. And I get there, and it's got some of those filthy words on it. I can turn it off with the remote. You see, it's not the TV that's ruining us. It's the remote. I was going to bring it and stop it. I didn't stop it. I didn't stop it. Corinthians says we're to choose our friends correctly. They either help you or hinder you in your efforts. Psalm 13 through 20. Pastor Randy did a great message that, that we needed to have friends that... that, that aren't believers that don't go to church because that, that, that gives us an opportunity to win them. We're to set ourselves apart. We're not to become intimate to that level. But we're to, but we're to have friends. But our close friends need to be people that know Jesus, that we can help lift up and can help lift us up. We, can't have, can, we cannot have communion with the darkness and expect the light of God to dwell in us, 2 Corinthians. So let's get to a close. I ask you tonight, What's the condition of your heart? I think if I had the president of the United States here, Democrat or Republican, whoever it is, I could look at them and say, what's the condition of America's heart today? Mike, why are you preaching this to us? Because as the churches go, is how America goes. And we've lost some of our influence. We've lost some of our power. Sometimes by the people we've elected. Sometimes because we're wishy-washy about what we, what we believe and what we teach and all. Are you filling your home, your heart, with good things? I struggle with a few things. Coca-Cola, Lay's potato chips, ice cream bars. And I started, while I was at the beach in April, March, saying, I'm going to lose some weight. And I lost a little bit. And then I drove by and, and, and I, I see one of the black cherry sodas. Full, nothing but sugar water. I said, Cindy, no, that first one I bought myself. I took it home, put it in the freezer, and I drank it. I almost chugged it. It felt so good, all that sugar going down and everything. Then the next thing, you know, that opened up my heart to where I wanted a Coca-Cola. And then I like Utz big, thick potato chips. I got me a bag of those. And when you get them, you've got to get that dip that goes with them. And then I said, well, Orville Redenbacher's popcorn, that Kittle White. Man, that stuff is really good. And I got some of it. And I thought I had to eat it all in one night. <laughs> Did I not, Cindy? <laughs> what's that have to do with this when our hearts may be pure and our hearts may be good but when we begin to let these impurities of the world come in it's just like me eating all that junk stuff those impurities begin to fester and just like that sugar being so pleasing to me Satan will take that stuff and he knows right where to put that spear and where to twist it and everything the next thing you know we fill our hearts my body with junk I weighed myself two weeks later and I gained three pounds. I said, this didn't work, did it? We've, we've all initials that are here, the initial cleansing 
of our heart. That's when we accept Jesus. The blood covers our sins. And it's great that that's happened. But we need to be careful and not be conceived or not be concerned about filling that dwelling place with the presence of God. We need to fill our hearts and we need to make a conscious effort to fill our spiritual hearts with the things of God. I don't know why people wait and I say that and I waited forever and all. We just need to get up, fulfill the great commission, go out and tell people about Jesus, win people, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We need to call on the name of the Lord. We need to have faith. But most of all, I'd close with telling you, we need to have a pure heart tonight. I'm not nearly as good as I can be. It's so easy to stand up and preach something, take God's word and know what it means. When it comes to living, it's just, it's different. Pastors have the same problems that you have. Everything's not easy. I, I told my wife so many times, I, I don't envy Pastor Randy one tiny little bit. So much, so much he's got to take care of and so much going on. We need to pray for our pastor. But I ask you tonight, I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads and close your eyes if you would. Not to me, I'm not even going to ask for you to raise your hands or anything, but ask God to reveal how you are with your heart and with your mind. And commit to God, not to me, not to me. Commit to God that you'll do your very best to fill your inner being, to fill your heart, to fill your mind with the things of God, the joy of God, the love of God. Because as you fill up your heart, as you fill it up, it pushes out the evil. If you haven't accepted sanctification, seek to learn more about it. Ask God through his Holy Spirit to reveal to you. Father, we, we sure love you tonight. And God, I, I thank you for these words. And Lord, they're, they're difficult to preach. And God, so many times, Lord, I've, I've failed. And Lord, I'm sorry for that. And God, I'm sure that, that most people here, if not all, would, would want to keep a pure heart and a pure mind. So God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just cause when, when we begin to to, to go a little bit different, different direction. We'll begin to lose our, our energy or our joy or our enthusiasm to come back and think, man, I need to leave my heart, my heart more for Jesus, more for God, and push that evil out. So, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your church. We thank you for our church family. We love you. We praise you. We thank you that we could have been here tonight in Jesus' word name. Amen. God bless you and you are dismissed.